so now we will see 3d transform property in css so guys basically the css also supports 3d transformations by specifying the axis and this we are going to check with the help of examples as well we are going to see the different css functions that are used with the help of the transform property so guys over here we have something called as rotate x then we have rotate y and rotate z as well so guys let us check this with the help of examples in vs code over here so simply i'm going to remove the previous lines of code that we had written we are going to write them once again so that you get the practice of writing the code in the html and css over here so guys simply we are going to have the div tag over here once again and for this div tag we are going to have fixed width and height so guys let's say we have the width as 150 pixels over here and the same 150 pixels for the height attribute as well that is the height css property so guys over here we have width and height of 150 pixels let us have the background color of aqua color this time so basically we have the aqua color as the background color for this particular div tag which will be a square shaped div tag over here and apart from this we will also have the border css property the border width is 2 pixels and the border style is solid and the border color is black color over here so guys let me just save this file now and try reloading this page once again on the browser so as you can see we have this square shaped div element in this case guys apart from this let us get this square at the center of the screen so over here we will provide the margin as auto for the left and right margin and for the top margin we will provide the 10 percent of margin in this case let me just save this file now and try reloading this page so as you can see to some extent we have got this square box at the center of the screen now guys let us see how the this rotate x function will work with the help of the transform property so guys over here what we want to do is inside the style.css file when we get the cursor on this particular div tag we want to rotate it so let us check that how we can do it so basically we have to use the div tag followed by colon and then we are going to use the hover pseudo class over here and on hover we are going to use the transform css property for which we are going to use the rotate function now guys previously we had seen the 2d transform properties which included rotate function over there but now we have the different rotate functions in terms of 3d transformation so we have so we have rotate x we have rotate y and we have rotate z which is expecting certain angles over here so guys let us see how this rotate x will work so let us say we provide a certain angle in this case so we provide 30 degrees in this case so let me just save this file now and try reloading this page once again on the browser so as you can see this is the original position of the div tag and the moment we get the cursor on this particular div tag the div tag is rotating itself so basically we are saying that the size of the div tag is decreasing that is the height is decreasing over here but guys in reality the square box is rotating itself with the help of the x axis over here so guys if you remember in the previous video we understood the x axis and the y axis when we were learning the 2d transformation but this time we are going to learn 3d transformation over here so what exactly is happening in this case is so this was the screen that we had seen previously let us remove this and we are going to have the square that we had just drawn on the web browser so basically we have this square box that we have drawn on the web browser over here let me just change the color to some other color so let's say we have yellow color over here now guys what exactly is happening is when we say rotate x basically this is the x axis in the horizontal direction so when we are rotating this particular box with the help of the x axis so the height of this particular div tag is decreasing over here but basically in reality it is not decreasing but the box is rotating itself in this x axis and that is why it is looking like the height is decreasing over here so guys in this way the rotate x will work that is the html element will rotate itself in the x axis direction now guys similarly when we use the y axis over here that is using the rotate y so you will see that the width of this particular square box will decrease to some extent when we use the rotate y so guys let us check that as well so over here we are going to say rotate y this time and then let's say we use the same angle that is 30 degrees over here so simply we provide 30 deg that is the unit let me just save this file now and try reloading this page once again on the browser and when we get the cursor over here as you can see the square box is rotating itself with the help of the y axis this time and it looks like the width of this particular square box is decreasing but in reality it is rotating itself with the help of this y axis 
over here so guys in this way the rotate x and rotate y will work now guys apart from this we also have something called as rotate z so how this will work so guys in 3d transformation we have another axis that is z axis over here which is coming on top from the center over here so guys if i draw this particular z axis it will look something like this over here and we draw the z axis so basically it will start from the center that is the origin and it will come on top so guys basically it will look something like this over here so this is the z axis as far as the 3d transformation is concerned so guys over here when we rotate in terms of z axis it will actually look like the square bracket is rotating itself as normal rotation so guys let us check this as well so basically what will happen is this square will be displayed over here and in terms of z axis it will rotate itself in the clockwise direction in this way so guys let us check this with the help of example over here so instead of rotate y we will say rotate z this time and then we will also provide 30 degrees as the value over here so simply we are going to provide 30 degree let me just save this file now and try reloading this page and when we get the cursor over here on the square box that is a diff element as you can see it is rotating itself and 30 degree is the rotation so guys in this way the z axis rotation will work it will look like it is actually rotating and that is how the z axis rotation works guys apart from this we also have the translate x and translate y and the translate z as well so let us check that as well with the help of examples so over here simply we are going to provide translate x in this case and let's say we provide 100 pixels over here as the value so guys basically the square box should go on the right hand side by 100 pixels over here when we say translate x so let us check this as well let me reload this page once again on the browser and when we get the cursor on this diff tag as you can see the box is going on the right hand side by 100 pixels over here and this is how the translate x will work guys apart from this we also have something called as translate y so this time the square box should come down over here by 100 pixels so let us check that as well so let me just save this file now and try reloading this page so when we get the cursor over here as you can see the box is coming down by 100 pixels and that is how the translate y will work based on the axis that we have seen over here and then guys apart from this we also have something called as translate z as well so guys over here translate z will make the box to come on top by 100 pixels so guys it will be on the same position if we are viewing it from top so let me just reload this page so if we get the cursor over here we won't be able to see any change right now but actually it is at the ground and from the ground it is coming at the height of 100 pixels over here on that same position because that is how the z axis will work as we have seen over here in this particular diagram so guys in this way you can provide the translate in all the axes as well and we can also provide the other function functions related to scale as well so guys let us check this as well with the help of example over here so let us provide the scale x this time and we will provide 1.2 as the number by which the square box will increase its size with the help of x axis so let me just save this file now and try reloading this page once again on the browser so when we get the cursor on this particular diff tag as you can see on the x axis direction that is the width of this particular square box is increasing and now it is becoming a rectangle so guys basically this div tag is increasing its width with the help of the 1.2 value that we have given over here if we want to double the width then we can simply provide the value of 2 for the scale x function so let me just reload this page once again so as you can see this is the double width of the original width of the div tag and then guys apart from this we can also provide the scale y which will help us in order to increase the height over here when we reload this page as you can see it is increasing the height of this div tag in terms of y axis over here and when we say scale z so let us check that as well so over here when we provide a scale z this time so let me just save this file now and try reloading this page you won't be able to see any change that's because we are scaling it in the bottom to top direction over here when we see the box from the top so guys basically this is the importance of the z axis that is the third axis as far as the 3d transformation is concerned and you can use all these css functions by using the transform css property based on your requirements so guys comment in the comment section below whether you have learned something out of this video please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to the channel so that you get the notifications on upcoming videos as well the next video that we are going to talk about is transition property in CSS. So stay tuned.